installment of our meditations by Dietrich Bonhoeffer for Advent. It's been a good four weeks, I think. I hope you've enjoyed uh, some of his musings. And the last four weeks we've talked about, or he's talked about uh, waiting, the, the, uh, the what's behind waiting, and also on mystery and redemption. And today our last installment is on incarnation. All taken from the book. I'll show it to you once again if you ever run across it. It's a really good read, especially for Advent and also after Christmas too. And Janet's in the building. Say hello, Janet. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, and uh, Janet, why don't you uh, begin with the New Jerusalem based on Isaiah 60, the Advent Canticle. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Though night still covers the earth and darkness covers the nations. Over you will the Lord rise, and over you will his glory appear. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will always be open, day or night. They will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will name your walls salvation, and you will call your gates praise. No longer will the sun be your light by day. No longer the moon give you light by night. The Lord will be your eternal light. Your God will be your glory. Drop down, you heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down the righteous one. A reading from Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph. He was of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. The title of this uh, piece is God Becomes Human. God becomes human, really human. While we endeavor to grow out of our humanity, to leave our human nature behind us sometimes, God, in fact, becomes human. And we must recognize that God wants us also to become human, fully human. Whereas we may distinguish between the godly and the godless, the good and the bad, the noble and the common, God loves all human beings without distinction. God takes the side of real human beings and the real world against all their accusers. But it's not enough to say that God takes care of human beings, which is true. This sentence rests on something infinitely deeper and more impenetrable, namely, that in the conception and birth of Jesus Christ, God took on humanity in bodily fashion. God raised his love for us above every reproach and falsehood and doubt and uncertainty by himself entering into the life of human beings, and indeed as a human being, by bodily taking upon himself and bearing the nature, the essence, the joys, the guilt, the suffering, the pain of all of us. Out of love for human beings, God became a human being. He does not seek out the most perfect among us in order to unite us with him, but rather he takes on human nature as it truly is. I'm going to 
conclude this with a, uh, a portion of a letter from Maria von Wiedemeyer, and that was, uh, she was Bonhoeffer's fiance, a much younger young lady, and they never did marry because, as you know, he uh, died in 1945, just before the camp was liberated. As a point of interest, Maria von Wiedemeyer immigrated to the United States after the war and lived to be a ripe old age and also was a professor of mathematics at a, a university in Massachusetts. But here she writes in uh, 1943 to Bonhoeffer, who's in Tego Prison, December 10th. And now Christmas is coming and you won't be here with us. We shall be apart, yes, but yet very close together. My thoughts will come to you and will accompany you. We shall sing, peace on earth, and we shall pray together. But we shall sing, glory be to God on high, even louder. That is what I pray for you and indeed for all of us that the Savior may throw open the gates of heaven for us at darkest night on this Christmas Eve so that we can be joyful in spite of everything. The Advent Responses from the Book of Alternative Services. My soul waits for the Lord. In his word is my hope. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. In his word is my hope. There is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning. In his word is my hope. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for the Lord there is mercy. In his word is my hope. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. My soul waits for the Lord, in his word is my hope. The concluding prayer for the uh, fourth Sunday of Advent. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And as we are sorely hindered by our sins from running the race that is set before us, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom and with you and the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this Advent and Christmas season, and remain with you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.